We will be discussing here in this short tutorial an overview of implementing an interest rate model in model risk. Interest rate modeling is very important and very interesting. It's used broadly in both private and public institutions. And we would like to demonstrate how it might be useful for you as implemented with model risk. In particular, model risk's correlation capabilities will be very important, as we'll see in a moment. We're going to show here a model that was inspired by Paul Wilmot in his book, Derivatives. In that book, a single interest rate is modeled using this technique. However, we've extended that to five different interest rates, Fed funds, one, three, five, and 10-year rates, and we've built in correlations between them. So in our model, we first start with some history. We have historical rates for our five rates starting in 1953 and going through the end of 2009. It's our intent then to model those rates for 12 months by month going into the future for a year. So in other words, through the end of 2010. We started here by plotting the historical rates. By a quick look at this plot, it's clear that these interest rates all have some type of relationship. However, it's also clear that it's not a perfect relationship or perfect correlation. So the relationship from month to month is similar, but not exactly the same. In order to represent that, what we've done is we've fitted a copula to our historical rate. We can have a look at what that copula look like, looks like. This is a T copula. And as you can see, it's a relatively linear relationship. However, it's not perfectly linear. And by using a copula in model risk, a very unique function, we're able to represent that closely linear relationship and preserve the correlation structure that we have in our historical data as we model the future interest rates. So we've built a correlation for each of the months. And so each of these rows is a separate copula that maintains that correlation as we build our model. The model itself is actually rather complex. For each of our five rates, we are actually using two different uh, spreadsheet tabs, and so we won't be able to go into the details. However, in general, this model is built up of two components. The first is a drift term. The drift term controls the long-term trend of each particular rate, and it's also mean reverting. So the long-term trend will tend to go back towards the average historical rate. There's also a volatility term, which incorporates randomness that generates sort of the, the volatility that we see in the very short-term results when we look at time series such as interest rates. So we've built our model to project the interest rates, each of our five rates, 12 months in the future. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Here again is our historical rates, just for reference. Here is a plot showing the next 12 months. And for each rate, there's a line. And these, again, since it's a Monte Carlo simulation, every time we run an iteration, it's going to give us a different result. So as I push the F9 key and recalculate the model, what we can see is that, in fact, we have preserved the historical correlation between them, which is that they tend to be parallel, but not perfectly parallel. And so if we look at a number of different iterations, we can see, particularly in the one year in the Fed funds, how they will at, at times be parallel or even during the course of a year be, have a far, uh, be farther apart than they are at different times of the year. So in the interest of time, I've already run a 10,000 iteration simulation of this model. And we can look at those rates here. We have a chart for each rate. And essentially, the dotted line is the historical rate. The colored lines are the future modeled rates. And at any one month into the future, we can look and see 100% of the trials of the simulation fell between the blue lines, 50% fell between the red lines, and 50% of the trials were above, and 50% of the trials were below the green line. 
It makes intuitive sense, but we can also see that as we go farther forward in time, the uncertainty we have about what will be happening with, e with each of these rates tends to spread out. Our model accounts for the fact that interest rates can't be negative or shouldn't be negative, and so, in fact, you can see, for instance, in the Fed funds, it starts at a very low rate, less than half a percent. It, it can't go much lower, but it certainly can go much higher. And if we go back and look at historical values, it is there have in fact been historical points where the short-term interest rates have gone up as much as 3%, and so we're preserving that part of the history as well. As we look at longer-term rates, in fact, the, uh, the general shape is the same, but we can see that the magnitude of each of the rates changes because certainly the longer rates tend to have higher, uh, be higher than the short-term rates. A quick comment about correlations. Again, to remind you, we're using copula as a very unique feature in model risk to, to build our correlations. And so why is that really important? If you were to look at these other charts, it's not particularly important if you look at each rate by itself in terms of what might happen to it. But if you were to use this model in a practical sense, for instance, a financial institution that is trying to model future interest rates because they may affect the actual rates of return for variable investments or they may affect the rates at which a, a product might be sold in the future. For instance, a, a car loan uh, versus a, a very short-term six-month loan, may the actual rate that those products are sold to the institution's customers may be indexed or may be connected to different rates on the, on the rate curve. And so it would be very important if you were to be modeling what's going to happen in six months that not only do you look at each individual rate and try to have an idea of where that right rate might be, but it's also important to know how they, uh, those rates are correlated so that, in fact, in your, in your balance sheet model, those rates and the products based on them would represent a realistic uh, scenario. So we've only scratched the surface. There are many, many interest rate models. Uh, we've implemented one here. What I've hope we've shown is that model risk is particularly suited for implementing these very complex models in a relatively quick, relatively easy way so that simulations can be run quickly in an Excel environment and um, and and it can be a very useful way to way to think about interest rates going forward so uh, if you have not already, I'd encourage you to contact us at www.vosoftware.com to download a trial version of Model Risk. If you have other questions, you can certainly contact Vos Software at these numbers. Our sister company, Vos Consulting, who's also our main reseller, can be contacted at these at these locations for any sales or technical questions or on the web at www.vosconsulting.com and I'd really encourage you to contact us, learn more about model risk, learn more about interest rate risk and learn how model risk can help you implement complex models in a relatively easy, quick and user-friendly fashion.